Welcome to Test 2 Plus, everybody. I'm Trace. This is Sleep Week. This is a show where we take big science topics. We make them feel a lot less big. And today we're looking at why sleep can be a pretty surprisingly hard thing to do. So why can't you sleep? The number one reason you can't sleep is electric lights, believe it or not. Maybe you believe it, because they're everywhere. Electric lights were invented not too long ago in the grand evolution of our species. And electric lights are what keeps us awake because it's simulated daylight. Before the electric light, we didn't actually have problems going to sleep in the same way. Because once the sun went down, everything got dark and we naturally started to fall into the rhythms of sleep. Once it gets dark, melatonin, which is a hormone in your brain, starts to be produced in large quantities. That melatonin starts to kick off the sleep cycle. And then you feel sleepier and you would eventually find a spot to cozy up for the night. But the electric light is actually keeping you from getting melatonin to start because your brain doesn't know the difference between the lights here and the lights in the sky. So it actually it interrupts that process. Several types of cancer have actually been tied to electric light exposure at night, including breast and prostate cancer, as well as diabetes, heart disease, and obesity. This is just electric light exposure at night. It keeps you awake and it can cause all of these different problems, or it's been correlated, really. It can't cause the problems, but it's been correlated with these problems. A big source in the modern day is screens from cell phones, from tablets, from computers, because the screens that we're using have blue lights. And the blue light from the screen, for some reason, suppresses melatonin production even more than regular light. So if you say we're looking at candlelight on one night, you would probably fall asleep a lot easier than if you were looking at a candle app on your phone at this, like the next night. The candlelight doesn't have as much blue light in it. And that blue light is suppressing your melatonin production. It might not look like it's blue, but your brain perceives that blue as part of it. Another thing that keeps people from sleeping is anxiety and stress. That's a big one. Anxiety and stress uh, are part of everyday life. Our stress hormones build throughout the day, and they actually have a cycle at night where your stress hormones will build up while you're sleeping as well, preparing for the day ahead. But anxiety and stress really come down to the fight or flight response, which is the idea that when presented with a stressor, you will either attack that stressor or confront it, or you will retreat from it or run away. Lying in bed with uh, an overactive mind teaches the body that the bed can be a stressor because during the day, you are out in the world being stressed by all sorts of things and your brain is working really hard. So when you lay down, you shouldn't be trying to work your brain too much. It's one reason why you shouldn't work in bed. But this comes down to training. That's a whole other thing. Insomnia is another problem people have when they can't sleep. It's a sleep disorder uh, that usually involves not being able to fall into sleep. It's more complicated than a specific melatonin release it mostly is a behavioral disorder. It comes back to training yourself with healthy sleep habits. To do that is not as hard as you might think. It really comes down to forming a sleep ritual. Sleep rituals are very common with sleep disorder patients. They have to make sure that people are taught how to go to sleep. Because again, the electric light has us all messed up. Forming a sleep ritual starts outside of the bedroom and then ends in the bedroom. You can't just walk into the bedroom, turn the light off, and expect your body to know now it's time for sleep because two minutes ago it wasn't. And that's not how the human body works. Uh, allow at least an hour for a sleep ritual before bedtime. So you want to wind down. You don't want to look at screens. You want to relax. You can read. You, know, you can dim the lights a little bit. All of those things are important to make your brain know that it's not daytime. It's not work time. It's not stress time. It's bedtime. Some places recommend reading. Some recommend light stretching. Uh, journaling, meditating, all of these are great. Some people like to exercise before bed, kind of get physically exhausted a little bit. But every person is going to be different, and you'd have to find out what works best for you for that nighttime ritual. But in the end, you can't sleep probably for a variety of reasons. But what most science would tell you is that it has to do with your sleep ritual. So if you sit down and create a sleep ritual and you stick to it, you'll be able to go to sleep pretty quickly. I used to have terrible sleep, and then I started using a sleep ritual where at the end of the night I would you know, turn the TV off a half hour before bed. If I was watching TV, I don't use 
my phones or my screens after that either. You know, brush your teeth, wash your face, whatever else. Do a little exercise and then lay in bed and read until I get tired. Usually it doesn't take that long. And as I trained myself, now I fall asleep in less than 10 minutes. I used to lay in bed for an hour just going and going in my mind. But I don't do that anymore. It's really nice. And now after you listen to this, I hope you go get a good night's sleep. But before you do that, check out our next video on what sleep even is. And thank you for watching.